We're rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Nerd Buzz. Nerd Buzz doesn't condone the consumption of alcohol by any persons under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. Welcome to Nerd Buzz, the podcast where we talk about all the nerdy stuff that we care about and drink a cool, frosty beer while we're doing it. Episode 83. I'm your host, Marcus Ellinger, and with me as always, Jeremiah Johnson. All right, Jeremiah. It's a big episode 83. It is. It's the one before episode 84 and after episode 82. Wow. Yeah. I just wanted, <laughs> just, to, just to clarify for anybody out there. Um, so we, we were going to go see Transformers. Were. Yeah. Might still, but... Maybe <laughs> we red box it and have lots of drinks. Should you we do know, a marathon it... of bad movies? We'll watch BVS. We'll watch Transformers. We'll watch all of them. Do a marathon. Wow. You better do it while I'm out of work. <laughs> because I'm going to need to recover after that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll be in a, we'll be in an explosive movie coma after all yeah. that. Um, so, but before we get into too much of anything, because I've been really good, and I haven't drank a beer yet today, and I'm salivating over this beer. And you've been outside a lot, too. I have. Which totally earns a beer. It's, I think so. Okay. So, will you please tell me what I'm drinking today so that I can drink it? Well, you're the one that brought it. So, it's the uh, Red Flag Amber from uh, Trouble Brewing, and as we talked about it last week, this one's out of Rochester, New York. Yeah, which... I don't know. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But I, I was know. surprised. But yeah, we were, we were talking that my, maybe it's a uh, a big big brand again, and that's why it's here now. But the other one was most definitely Ireland. Yeah, it said that on the can. On the can, said it when you brought the website up. Everything. Yep. So anyway, uh, I'm curious as we keep. I think there's two more left. So I'm curious as we drink them. I'm gonna read the cans now. I want to know where they're from. Definitely. Yeah. But uh, like I said, it's the Red Flag Amber, 4.5%. It's definitely an amber beer. It is. It's very um, clear, though. It's very pretty. Super clear. Looks pretty well carbonated. It um, smells sweet. It uh, actually... Hmm. It's almost got like a... Almost like an apple-y or something it's got, yeah, smell it's to got it. got like a cidery smell to it. Yes. I love it when I say things before you and then you agree. Yes. No, it's, a very, <laughs> it's a very cidery type... Yeah. Hence the sweet, right? Yeah. No, yeah. It, it smells like a cider almost. That's what I thought too. But uh, anyway. Um, you like your little boom over there makes it convenient to be right-handed? It does. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we can put it right here and then you can just be like, no, it's my side. I'll just bump into you all my the time. My side. Yeah. Don't cross the line. <laughs> <laughs> Let me a piece of tape running down the room. Um, so so uh, can we give it the real test? Because I'm so parched. All right. So... To all the nerds? Through all the fuzz. Bottoms up. Let's, Let's get, get nerd buzzed. buzzed. Wow. That is very refreshing. Has an almost cidery taste to it. It totally does. It's, um... Uh, right before the finish. Yes. Yes, but it's, it's nice and tart. Very crisp with its... Flavors. On the tongue, it's um, it's much lighter than wow. I thought it would be. And then it's got just a real mellow malt flavor. Just that just yeah. sits on your tongue at the end. There it lingers there. Yeah, hmm. super crisp and like refreshing before that. And this is a nail. This is almost this is almost uh, lagerish. What's our potency? This. Four or five. Yeah, but it's gonna have to drink three of them. <laughs> 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 well, we have three to drink. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> I planned that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or three more to drink, I should say. So. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's pretty good, actually. I, I, I went into this, I don't really like red beers, right? They're mm. super, like, they're super malty, and well, they're, they're rich. Um, it has that part of the, like, the uh, triple and the, the imperial IPAs that I'm getting burnt out on. Mm -hmm. Like, it has that element to it, but it's... It's almost like super emphasized in the red beers without the alcohol. Yeah, but this isn't red. This is an amber. That's true. I keep thinking red because it says red flag. Yeah. Maybe they're just warning us. They're just like, <laughs> hey, whoa, this isn't actually an amber. It's actually a cider amber. <laughs> well, I think it's the honey. That's where you're getting the sweet from. And then the hops are what are giving you that that uh, tartness to it. So Yeah. 
So again, Christmas you thing. think you think they have this common theme of throwing honey in their beer? Maybe that's an Irish thing. It's ale with honey, Just with honey added right there on the can. All right, it's an Irish thing. We've created a new stereotype. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I'm, not get, I'm not getting that strong honey taste that I was getting out of that last. No, one. and it's not as waxy. No, no. So, so. but we're going to keep drinking it, of course, because that's what you do with beer, and it always gets better. Well, most okay, of the time. Most of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're going to keep playing Life is Strange. It's our nerd yes, play game. I we got, got to the end of the month. Last chapter to do. I would be, I think I'd be like on chapter four if I didn't get scolded for playing chapter two without my wife. Oh, so, so she's liking it. That's yeah, good. she liked it to the point where I kind of got yelled at a little. She, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't play that without me. So, Well, you know what I did? I've... St- Tumbled down, tumbled down the uh, the rabbit hole. Yes. Yeah, I put in Skyrim again. Yeah, I noticed that and today. Actually, you did. Actually, I and the day before, and the day before, <laughs> hits the rabbit hole. I put it in at three o'clock. I was like, yeah, I'll just play for an hour, start a, start a game, you know, because I put it what I put the disc in months ago and got all the updates loaded on it and everything, and yeah, couldn't pull the trigger. I just couldn't do it, and. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'll just play like 10 o'clock. That's all. That'll be good. Next thing I know, I'm so... <laughs> what the hell? There's light seeping through the windows and everything else. It's 4.45 in the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So you officially have a problem again. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I have a house already and a follower. and Nice. Yeah, and I've like already like... In the game. In the game. And, okay. And, 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 have, uh, <laughs> and, and, and fully like... Uh, fully decked out elven armor and sneaks like way up there already it's like is the uh so I'm, um, I'm, I'm taking a different tactic this time too i've never done the whole assassin silent sneak character with art with archery and stuff as a major i've always had like archery boosted as a secondary thing but just been the brute i've always just been the guy that just runs in hack slash hack slash yeah and this time i'm going okay i'm, I'm gonna do magic and 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 uh and uh sneak more than anything and, and then stack that's the, never my tactic. And I've never did, have did it either, but I'm trying that this time. Yeah, and uh, it's it's slower to get going with it. The the brute can just charge in, start stacking that really hard, and and <laughs> no problems whatsoever. But uh, other than we just lost a uh, tripod, but <laughs> it's all right. It's just a little one. It's real. It's all real. Yes. Um, <laughs> Does it look amazing? Because that was the thing I wanted to know. So it looks way better than the original Skyrim did as far as just density of stuff. And I've noticed like when you're harvesting little um, lavender and all the stuff to do, that's way more plentiful to find. But uh, it looks dated. But 10 minutes into playing it, you don't care. Yeah, I've always thought <laughs> that... Uh, I've always felt like Skyrim always kind of looked a little dated. Yeah. Right, it almost looks like a it's, I think it's like a PC it's... game running at almost the height, the the high settings. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's just because it's so massive. Yeah, it's all because of the damn lavender they added. If they would have just left more, no, but I'm just saying harvesting the, stuff just, out of the, it. the world. I mean, <laughs> the, of the game, it's just massive. Yeah, like, the game is huge, and there's. I think I'm and pretty much. If you see it, you can go there. I think right? I, I think I'm like over twenty hours already. Damn, and I still haven't even covered a quarter of the map you sound like you're gonna be as bad as me with persona 5 yeah not quite halfway through persona 5 and i already have 60 something hours in that game yeah yeah well (laughs) my first time through skyrim i uh uh, on ps3 i got to like 130 or 140 hours or something like that into it and it glitched out and wouldn't let me progress the story i mean i could keep playing it just wouldn't let me move the story along and i was really trying to max the story out you know finish the story so that got done i got, kind of got miffed with that and uh you know dinked around a little bit more probably another 12, 10 12 hours or something of gameplay and then decided to restart and i got almost 200 hours into that Damn. game and it glitched out and wouldn't let me progress anymore which is I think that was the biggest reason why i was like i was excited when i got it you gave it to me i was like really excited when you gave it to me but it's like i it's just that super hesitant. I don't want to go do this again. <laughs> I'm totally your Skyrim enabler. You are. <laughs> I like that I pushed Skyrim on you. <laughs> At least you don't have to come I, back I, to I, me I, to I, get more because I, feel, I would I, jack the price up. I feel bad. 
<laughs> oh, see, so nothing, nothing, carry the nothing. All yeah. Right, cool. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, uh, I, I said I felt really bad when you gave it to me and I loved the game and everything and it's like I hadn't played it and I just kind of really felt bad for not playing because you gave it to me for my birthday and then you gave me Tomb Raider after it yeah. and I still hadn't played Skyrim. Well, I was fully aware that when I gave you Skyrim, it might be a game that you don't beat for years, right? Like yeah. you just might pick that up and play it whenever and yeah, uh, there was no pressure with Skyrim. <laughs> just, I'm glad that I... you beat Tomb Raider because you were about to never hear the end of it. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah and i still haven't given it to my brother oh nice. i still have that lucas just <laughs> holding on to it for ransom i'm waiting for him to offer me something for it <laughs> i'm not even playing it by the way uh just sitting on it yeah. um so before we get too far okay. into the show please shrink your screen oh, because okay. i'm sure it's full size because you'd love to see our beautiful faces as big as you can get them shrink it down hit subscribe like follow do all that good stuff we get 100 subscribers and we get our own channel. Nice. It would be super cool to have. We totally appreciate it. Also, if you want a bonus episode of Nerd Buzz every single month, give a dollar, you get a bonus episode. Yep. For a dollar. Yes. Yeah. No guaranteed content quality, but it'll be good. <laughs> I actually have uh, some banked ideas, and uh, we have one banked that yes. I'm tempted to let out, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, so on to some show stuff. We were going to go see Transformers. We were. And... Might, might, might after, but it's going to, have to be well. I think we we were too buzzed at the end of the last episode when we thought we might do that. Yeah. We weren't thinking clearly, so <laughs> we did not go see it. And I'm totally stoked because that freed up enough time for me today to watch the sweet uh, original animated one, which is right here. And it is awesome. It's so good. It's so just dated and '80s <laughs> and awesome. The soundtrack for that movie is beyond great. Uh, it, it introduced me to Stan Bush, the Montage King. If you don't know who Stan Bush is, or you just, you know, just not feeling that super great about yourself, maybe you're just, your day could be a little better, put on some Stan Bush, and it doesn't get better. That's it. It's the p- pinnacle of better. Um, so we didn't go see it, and I'm not going to go see it. I, I almost feel like we shouldn't encourage more of these Transformers movies anyway. <laughs> well, he did say he's done, didn't he? I think that was like two of them ago. Oh. He said he was done again, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think he, at some point he's going to run out of things to blow up. Is what I keep hoping. Oh, the world again, again. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the biggest news around the Transformers, which I didn't make a note of, is that they're saying this this movie. Uh, there's potential for it to be the last one that before they roll into like the Hasbro universe, which could uh, oh, really so combined. The ones that they're saying at the forefront, right, are Transformers, G.I. Joe, Micronauts, uh, Visionaries, and Mask and Rom. So whatever those, I know what some of those are, but not all of them. I'm not sure on the Micronauts. I have some comics I haven't actually read yet. Huh. I was a huge Mask fan, though. I don't remember remember Mask. Um, It was Transformers-esque, but the the vehicles changed into another vehicle. Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. There's like a green motorcycle, and they all wore masks, or, or hel- they were helmets, but they wore them, and they gave them like their ability. Uh, the guy who rode the, this green motorcycle, like the back wheel would flip out, and this little propeller would come up, and it turned into a helicopter, and he had this like ability sounds, to cause familiar. like an illusion. The uh, leader guy drove a red Camaro, I'm pretty sure, and it had like gold wing doors that would come up and extend, and it could like fly. Okay, that's sounding really familiar, but I, I still can't. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was it was cartoon. I yeah. totally remember watching it as a kid. And uh, clearly toys, right? Because it's Hasbro. Uh, but they're talking about making this big, meshed universe. And they're still really stoked to make a Bumblebee movie. Right? Why? I just have problems with Bumblebee entirely in this universe. So, Even if it was the this amazing movie right here, I still don't want a Bumblebee spinoff. I would not no. watch that. Just Bumblebee and Spike, their adventures continue, right? I don't want that. <laughs> that sounds like no fun to me at all. Uh, yeah. No, I'm... I don't Don't get me started on the whole Camaro thing, because I don't care for Camaros to begin with, and then... Yeah. Is it I so much Beatles. a Camaro thing, uh, or is it a lack of Beetle thing? Both, because I... <laughs> if, you, if you chose one car for me to pick that... I wasn't going to get you started. I totally if you, if you chose one car for me to pick that I hate... It'd be a Chevy Camaro. 
Really? What if? What about like a really sweet '80s one? Uh, no, no. Is that the Firebird? Is that different? <laughs> if it has the bird on the hood, right? You're thinking the '80s Trans Ams and Firebird. Yes, yeah. those yeah, aren't cool. Those what were... about the ones that were like solid gold with a T top? If you have some Def Leppard playing really loud in it, is it cool now? <laughs> How many in, more sweet in things the movie, do I have to do? In, in the movies, they were cool, <laughs> but they were. It's, I never wanted one. Okay, never wanted one. I want one. It's great. <laughs> And I was just going to get into Camaro Drivers as being one of the main reasons I don't. You can only play. <laughs> you can only play Def Leppard, uh, Van Halen, right? Some Foreigner, yeah. Journey. You can play Journey in it. I'll allow that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, preferably some sort but, of. But uh, then I said, then it's a lack of Beetle, which I drove today in my Beetle. I noticed that. Yeah. Fixed the throttle linkage with a rubber band. Nice. Did you put a pull tab on it just just for kicks? We'll get there. Okay, nice. Let's grab one. I like that it'll be from this cast. Yes. <laughs> That's going to give... It's at least a horsepower that you're adding. By oh, adding weight to geez. it, right? Yeah. Don't cut yourself. I'm going to. Okay, we'll get a You're making me nervous. We'll get a different... Per- um, oh, that one's not going to work. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we don't give a crap about this new Transformers movie. What movie? Yeah, right? Uh, Wahlberg, you're not going to save it. No. And... Go see this one, please. It's really, really good. You can get it super Don't cheap. put your back out while we're, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, but another movie that we can comment on is Wonder Woman now holds the record for the gross, largest gross sales of a movie directed by a female. Oh, really? Yeah. How many so kumo, ku, kumos, kudos. So, I mean, I don't want to like sound like an ass here, but how much competition was there? Um, I want to say this one made 609 million worldwide which less than half of that was actually u.s which i was a little bit surprised by Hmm. um but then the other the the now the runner-up the last top one was mama mia okay and i have no idea how much that made i didn't look that far into it but now wonder woman is the third highest for 2017 right behind beauty and the beast and guardians of the galaxy Hmm. i bet you it passes beauty and the beast i hope so i don't think it's passing uh guardians no, probably not. I don't think so either. Well, and I think that, I think it's only going to have that title for, well, what? We get Spider-Man in two weeks. Yeah. So I would not be surprised if that surpasses it. Yeah, everybody loves Spider-Man. Yes. Everybody. You better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so stern and serious. Uh, more on movie news. Probably the biggest movie news of the week. Okay. Is that Ron Howard is taking over for the solo Han Solo movie. The Solo Solo movie. The Solo Solo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was originally going to be directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, and they were fired after two, uh, three quarters of the movie was actually done filming. Dang. So are right? they going to go do reshoots for all of it, or are they... I heard that they're doing reshoots. Uh, they were already scheduled to do the reshoots before Ron Howard came into the picture. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yes, they're doing reshoots. And the main... One of the things I came I came away from it was uh, well first Phil Lord and Chris Miller they're the guys who did the uh, the Lego movie which mm-hmm. I personally thoroughly enjoyed if you can't tell I have an affinity for Legos yeah and uh, they also did the Twenty One Jump Street movies nice okay. which are garbage they are right? it's like the Baywatch movie I mean, maybe they did that movie I haven't seen that movie but that <laughs> looks like Twenty One Jump Street I'm not gonna see that either <laughs> go watch the TV series it's like the same kind of thing yeah yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, what I had heard was that they were doing too much like ad libbing and just kind of playfulness with the movie. And they wanted to keep the franchise more true to George Lucas's original image. I thoroughly hope they do that. Yeah. So even though uh, image. I would say, yeah, right? <laughs> um, I, I would say though that Han Solo is like, he's kind of your comedy relief of Star Wars. A little bit. Yeah, uh, you think so? No? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, with the well, Ewoks, really, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe him and uh, Chewie together. Yeah. That's what makes it. Well, him and Leia together. That, too. Yeah, yeah totally. Comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now Ron Howard's taking over. And it's um, such subtle comedy, comparatively. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's not like, hey, we're funny. Yes. Laugh at me. Oh, no. The, they, um, were, they weren't Gimli from... Uh, Lord of the Rings. No. <laughs> well, in those other movies, okay, with the exception of the Lego movie, I I think I've only seen part of the first 21 Jump Street. I think there's two of them. 
Oh, God, really? I don't think it warranted a sequel. The little bit I saw. No, but if it made, if it made, if it broke even, which means it made a profit. Yeah. No. <laughs> if it broke even, they'll make another one. Um. And actually, like Rogue One, kind of went through the same reshoot thing. The so reshoots aren't unheard of, but uh, they're doing five weeks of reshoots. Already scheduled before Ron Howard. It's still scheduled to release on May 25th. Um, and again, it was because of producer director issues, right? That they were having uh, conflicting with each other. And I thought it kind of reminded me of like the Joss Whedon Zack Snyder thing. Like this is for a whole different reason. Zack Snyder didn't get fired, right? It's like this personal tragedy for him. Mm-hmm. But when a movie comes out that's already three quarters of the way done, and it says directed by or whatever. Do they just forget the other two people did most of the movie? Probably. Yeah. You think they Probably. don't get they any don't get... sort of listing on it? It might be listed in there, but I don't know. I would think almost in the case of the um, of the Justice League, there might be, right? Because it's more of this, like, he was, it wasn't because of, like, a conflict between the production company and the director. So maybe they tag them both in there. But yeah, yeah. What's he, if you've been fired, you probably just lose everything, right? I would think so. Does that mean you could have filmed the whole movie? We don't want your stain here. Thank yeah, you. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could have filmed the whole movie. It's on the editing room floor. It's like pretty much almost done, and you get fired, and they bring in a final guy to just do the final cleanup. His name goes on the movie. Wow. That'd be harsh. That would be kind of harsh, harsh, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, how crappy would you feel? You did all that work. Well, depends on how, how much what my severance package was. <laughs> I guess, yeah. What your hush buddy is. Yeah, exactly. You were never involved. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> what do I got to pay you to shut you up? Yeah. Yep. So, well, and then what if it goes the other way? What if the movie, because like Ron Howard didn't film most of the movie or have as much control over most of that part of it. So what if it's not perceived very well? Now he has to deal with the backlash of it because his name is the one that's on it. Like it could go both ways, right? Yeah. So I don't five know. Five weeks of reshoots. Yeah, they can change a lot of the movie in five weeks. Yes, they of can. Reshooting. Yeah, and maybe that's a. Uh, you know, maybe uh, hopefully they're not doing a whole crap load of CGI in it, but who knows if five weeks is almost the amount of time for like the real acting that's going on in the movie. Well, I want to say, what is it? Uh... <laughs> like Transformers, five weeks they could have filmed like three movies. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> I want to say like uh, the last. Um kevin smith movie i want to say they were 15 days or something like that of shooting for just and that's just all dialogue but i mean it's yeah and he granted he doesn't have a lot of set changes in there anything like that but 15 days of shooting i think is what what they said 15 20 days oh wow that's like nothing it's a month (laughs) yeah one at a time so i don't know five weeks of reshoots and granted i mean a bigger budget movie changing changing sets and all this stuff and it's going to have major this that's going to take up a lot of time yeah so um i i think they're changing making making some pretty major major changes like maybe they knew that they they as soon as they started disagreeing they they they're like all right (laughs) let's get go to whatever date we need to to not ultra breach contract or whatever we're already going to plan all this stuff. And they just had like Ron Howard in the back burner. Just waiting <laughs> to step up, right? Yeah. Could be. I mean, we weren't in the room just now, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know, uh, can you guess my favorite Ron Howard movie? Is that totally on the spot? Do you even know a Ron oh. Howard movie? I don't know a lot of them. I just know one in particular. And I think you liked it as well. Uh, if... <laughs> <laughs> Which one? It... Uh, it involves um, Mad Mardigan. Is that a giveaway? Uh, Has Daikinis in it? I can't remember which The uh, negative thing to call them, I think, is a peck. Instead of Daikinis, right? <laughs> <laughs> has to do with a, with a human child, and it has a, like a wolf's like, uh, <sighs> thing that they float it down the river. It has a wolf thing in it that came to get him. It scared me as a kid. I don't remember which one. The was. evil queen was this redhead. I thought she was pretty hot. This goes back to my Mary Jane yeah, fantasies. Yeah. yeah. What, which one? <laughs> Willow. Oh my god. Mad Morgan. Duh. <laughs> I should have gotten it right off of that. 
That's all right. I put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I should have wrote it on here. I should have wrote yeah. Psst. <laughs> No, I, I feel like a total idiot now. That's like my only... Because I watched that movie so many times as a little kid. Yeah. Well, and I don't think you ever... Uh, that was something else I thought when they were talking about the director stuff. I don't typically know movies by the director. No. No. It's, at least growing up as a kid, I never knew who directed whatever movie I was watching. Hmm. I didn't know that was a Ron Howard did either, but yeah. No. I just know because I was researching stuff about it. And then I was like, well, what other movies did he make? Maybe it'll be awesome. And hmm. Willow was in there, but that was a long time ago. That was yeah. one of his first movies. I Yeah. No, actually, I haven't seen... I probably haven't seen that since I was nine, ten years old. Yeah. Again, it's one of the ones... I know all the words to it. And it's one of the ones that I own... Uh, <laughs> I, I thought that as soon as I watched the original Transformers today, too. I was like, I know all the words to this. Oh, you you had the... You, you taped it off the TV? Yes. Oh, okay. The Willow was taped off TV. For yes. Sure. Had commercial breaks. Where uh -huh. I, which means I know all the words to that movie, except for like the first three minutes after a commercial break, where we scrambled for the remote and, unpause it, unpause it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's missing those little chunks here and there. <laughs> See, I had a, I had one of those cool uh, uh, VHSs that had you could dub it to another tape. Oh, so you could when the commercial break, you just you just record the whole thing and you go back and uh, frame, 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 frame until you get to where the commercial starts and then hit uh, uh, play record on the on the both deals and cut them out that way. Nice. So the real question on that, based I, on I, that I did, story I did that now, to, I did that to Superman. Nice. I was gonna say uh, <laughs> the real question is how many Video Farm VHSs did you do that to? I didn't do dub very many VHR, Video Farm VHSs. I think. Um, Can I you think of one? Uh, yes. Um, that helicopter one. Uh, which one was it? With the helicopters off in the sunset. It, it was on the cover of it. I don't remember. He's the um, he's got to fly the helicopter under the hood. He can't. He can't do it. He can't do the 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 focusing with the with the uh, one eye and the gal. It's like no, you just got to shoot with your other eye. I don't remember you this. Remember oh yeah, <laughs> it sounds awesome. It was great. <laughs> any any movie with a helicopter pilot with one eye, he's got no, be no. Great. He's he's got two eyes but he he's got to he's got to use the targeting system with the, under the hood and do all the instrument flying so he can't mm. see he can't see the world around him yeah yeah so he's flying solely off of instruments and and using the electronic targeting system huh i don't know he can't do it and it's like well, he's shooting the and uh the girl's like she's like shoot me just shoot me just you know and like point your finger at me and shoot me he's like in you know, her crossing so he's like aiming with his left eye but shooting with his right hand i don't know it yeah so yeah <laughs> anyway, apparently it must have been good it was worth recording oh yeah it was yeah <laughs> um, i liked it almost as much as top gun <laughs> when i was in uh except well do you like it as about as the difference between jets and helicopters yes okay i, I assumed as much yes uh <laughs> the only actual vhs recording i did was uh like vhs to vhs was when i was in uh college and it wasn't very long uh community college and I was taking a film class and so you had to make all these different types of films. And, um, one of them was actually some Kevin Smith footage. I was pulling off of something to do this, like this kind of just uh, set up different, different theme. It was like an ad or something. And I got in so much trouble when they found out that's what I was doing in the film lab. They were pissed for one, because apparently rentals are like super, super filthy. And so when I ran it through their system, they said they had to take it all apart and clean it now because it has oh. all this garbage on the tape. And it's a huge copyright infringement, so I got yelled at for that, too. But I didn't nice. think about it at the time. The yeah. cool thing about that class is my final video project I did, you were supposed to turn it in and uh, then, like, explain it and whatever, like a report, right? And it was, like, this huge percentage of your grade. And I didn't do that at all. I just put it in the teacher's, like, drop box and was like, I'm out of here. And I got an A in the class. So he also liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it was this uh, Chandler who was on our episode. It was about oh, yeah. him uh, taking a hit of acid. And he, like, freaked out at this party. And he went and hid in this box. And every time he would, like, come out of the box, it would be a different background with different music playing. And so it was all these different scenarios where this box and him traveling around. We actually did a scene in front of the police station down in town. And we had uh, 
the box next to Chandler and he was squirting a water bottle on the side of the building like he was peeing with his hand on it and then the shot panned out it was the police station and we actually got a police officer to be in it and he came out and he's like hey what are you doing kid and then Chandler like leaps in the box and appeared somewhere else it was pretty funny (laughs) (laughs) nice yeah the cop was all over it he's like yeah I'll be in your movie what do you want me to say give me the script (laughs) script (laughs) yeah right (laughs) just come out and yell at him (laughs) I'm good at that okay yeah it was pretty funny (laughs) um so I don't know. We'll see. I don't think that just because Ron Howard is going to step in and direct it means it will be any worse or better. Yeah, I don't, I don't have of. this super high expectation now because he's attached to it. I don't know. I like. I just like Willow. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, he's done a lot of movies since. I then. know that. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> uh, I think there was forty of them, but like the first four or five many? were like uh, shorts. Oh, okay. Like whatever little personal projects it was kind of the impression i know he was prolific but i didn't I was that prolific yeah wow um so i don't know we're gonna see that one though are we the han solo yeah. you're not gonna see it yeah, of course i yeah. am Jeez. we'll just stay here and watch old star wars instead <laughs> <laughs> and then put that up here and bash the new one um <laughs> i haven't even seen it yeah <laughs> that's the theme right we ruin stuff yeah um wow we, we've seen it we saw the previews yeah, no, it ruined itself, I'm sure. <laughs> I didn't need to go see it. Um, so we also have some video game news. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually pretty excited about it. Um, I'm hoping that I'm not so excited that I'm going to be let down. Like a certain console system company that I like to bash on, even though I super love them. <laughs> uh, That's why you do it. Yeah, it's true. It's because I passionately feel that way. But we have new mini consoles from Atari and Sega. Yep. And so Atari is going to give us, there's Atari Flashback Gold, which you get 120 Atari 2600 games. It's coming out this, they're all coming out this September. Nice. Uh, you get a cheaper version, the Flashback 8 Classic, which is going to be 105 games with only two wired controllers. Okay. Um, the Gold Edition has, uh, you can plug in uh, like old school controllers if you have them, but then it also comes with wireless ones that are, I'm assuming. They're probably just as a d-pad sound instead of the joystick yeah i don't know or at That'd least be my guess yeah some sort of revamp i hope they're all classic looking i don't know well the atari is the joystick i mean that's the classic yeah right yeah with the little did it have a little one, button on one the red side? button yeah on the side yeah it didn't have one on the stick did it uh, i don't think so no i can't remember i just remember you had to hold it like that yep yeah um and then they also are going to do the flashback portable which is only going to have 70 games but you can put in an sd card and add more games so they're just, like, encouraging piracy there, which is awesome. Uh, <laughs> and it will also include a port that you can hook up to your TV. I like the that they're doing that, though. They're just like, people are going to do it and mod it. Just put the SD slot in there so that they'll just do that on their own. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then uh, Sega is also doing a console, which is, again, coming out in September. Which is the one I heard about. 85 games. Yep. Uh, it comes with cartridge support also, which yep. I thought was super cool. You can play all your old cartridges on it. Yeah. Um, almost all of them. I don't know which ones won't work, but they said... Well, if, if, you, if you start reading about it, there's like four different Sega Genesis models. And uh, then they had the the the, what, the power disc converter or whatever it was or the, to be able to play the different style system. Oh, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, <clears throat> the cartridge, the pre-cartridge. The cartridge, and then they had the little chip cartridges too. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, with the with the power disc converter and an older older Sega, you can do like ninety percent of your Sega games, but none of their systems play a hundred percent of them. Mm. You, it's like to get to play all your Sega get all your Sega games, you have to have all the systems to be able to do a hundred percent. So, I read you. Yeah. Um. It also comes with ports for wired controllers if you mm-hmm. still have them, but it comes with two wireless ones. Okay. And uh. I'm pretty sure that they're all going to be in 720p and they all will feature a pause, save and rewind feature. Probably like the little mini Nintendo, right? Yeah. Safe state setup. Yeah. Um, so a couple questions. Alrighty. Will you be able to get one? I think so. I really, really hope so. And do you think there's anything around this? That's kind of this like F you to Nintendo. Oh, totally. Right. No, entirely. Yeah. And uh, even if they do it the same production numbers as Nintendo did, 
I still think they'll be more readily available. Probably. Just because of the fact that uh, I don't think that there's Nintendo is more mainstream. Yes. This is gonna be more people looking for it. So. Well, and I think uh, again, I, it's like uh, like we I said last episode, Nintendo is totally a brand, mm-hmm. right? And these other these other systems have kind of like turned into sponsors. Yeah. Like for the for the games, right? They're yeah. not so much as the brand. Yeah, they make the software, not the hardware. Yeah. Um, Till now. Right. <laughs> but I want to be able to get one. I want them to be in the store. I think they should be in the store in abundance. They should not... You should not have to wait to get one. Uh, there should You should be able to go to a shelf at the end of an aisle, right, in the electronics section, and there should be like 50 of these things. Yeah. they got to be cheap to make. they got to be super cheap to make. I totally. Mean, have you ever seen the Retrons? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it. they're cheap. 50 bucks, you can get a system that play plays... All your old style cartridges. I think the the three does um, NES, SNES, and Genesis. Yeah, I mean, and they make the the the, the five and the larger ones. They do uh, uh, sixty four. I, th- I think there's one that does sixty four. I'm not sh- positive on that, but uh, um, does Game Boy and everything else too. So <laughs> yeah. Well, and those don't have games built into them. They don't have games built into them, but a lot of people still have all their old games. Yeah. And stuff. So it's like, you can play them that way. There's... The Sega one is kind of like the best. It's like the dream machine, right? Mm-hmm. The Sega dream machine. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because I was a little concerned when I first read it because I didn't, at first I didn't read that they were, they're going to have the ports for the old controllers to actually plug in and use a vintage controller. Mm-hmm. Um, because I... Anytime you play with, like, a Mad Cats controller, that's what I always think of, right? Yeah. Or the, is it Nyko or something? Is there another one, too? Something oh, like that. there are so many different yeah. brands. They're not as good. They just aren't. They feel clunky. The buttons aren't as responsive. And mm-hmm. just, so I kind of want the real controller. But if they do a sweet, like, the same quality revamped wireless one, I'm all over that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And how cool would it even be to throw one? It'd be like a boomerang. It's your buddy across the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Not I like lost, dude. Yeah, You're up. to him, not at him. You're up. Yeah. It'd be hilarious if he did that and he got psyched out because it hooked and came back to you. Like a boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, the Sega. My ring. turn. Yeah, All right. Yeah. <laughs> just don't even look and just right back. That'd be so cool. I can see you sitting outside <laughs> practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got this. I'm going to do it. <laughs> It'll be on our next video. <laughs> I'm going to master it. I have to have an Australian accent for that. Might. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be a good A. <laughs> get on, Mike. Yeah. Um, Shrimps on the bobby. Are you, do you think you would get any of those? Oh, the Sega. I'd be all over the Sega. Yeah. That's the one I thought so, too. Yeah. I'm pretty intrigued by this Atari uh, handheld one, though. This is actually kind of cool. And I actually think it seems like the best deal anyway. Because it's probably a little cheaper than the gold, but you can still hook it up to your TV and you can expand it with an SD card. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, what, what's the controller options on that one, though? Yeah, I don't know. You might be stuck with the little handheld thing. Yeah. Right? I think, I'm think i thinking so. And I guess it makes me more concerned about the controllers now if the handheld one, because I doubt the handheld's going to be like a stick with a button on this side and you like look at the screen, right? It might be. I'm assuming it's going to be a D-pad with your button. Probably. Right. It would be pretty cool. Or Super major... inconvenient and annoying, or, or, but it or, might be cool. Say, or like an N64 joystick. Yeah. I hated that joystick. I hated that joystick, too. <laughs> it was crap. That we... it was. Really, the whole controller was kind of crap. Which is why I didn't like it and didn't pursue finding one. Yeah. The weird, do I hold it this way or this way or this way? Well, you're supposed to be able to do all. Yeah. That's why they designed it that way. It was weird. I remember some games you'd play... On the outside, but you still have to use the trigger. So you oh. just have to like reach across and do mm, the trigger mm-hmm. button under there because I refuse to grab that weird whatever one in the middle. <laughs> I never owned it. My sister had an it. Oh, okay. 64. Yeah, my, my buddy's had one. I played Conquer first on a 64. Yeah. She got a video game system before I did. And it was okay. Wow. My like sanctioned by my parents. Weird. Yeah, right? I don't have any issues. I'm totally fine with it to this day. Um, <laughs> clearly. So, uh, another beer? Please. Look at you, you're taking your beers to Poundtown. 
That's a one-way ticket. I'd say you've already re-upped, though. Mm-hmm. I'm catching up, man. You're right. My math's bad. So, uh, what do you think of our beer? I'm liking it. I'm really liking it. The honey flavor's coming out more as it gets a little warmer. And it's very... It's very almost border, very borderline cidery. It really is. It's like it is. malty cider. Yeah. Definitely. Which, I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> I'm a little confused. But I like it. It's starting to work. I haven't really eaten much today, so I like that. <laughs> oh, sweet. My uh, One Punch Man just showed up. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm stoked. <laughs> uh, that's what that was. Nice. And uh, well, do you want to talk about, do we do beer then next week? Or next week then beer? Yeah, let's finish with beer. Okay. So next week, we're still going to keep watching Last Exile. Yeah. We can review it next week. I'll be yeah. all caught up. I really like it. Um, I, I really enjoy in it how... Uh, how it so much of it is done from different perspectives and that a lot of it is done from from like a child's perspective of total adult things that are going on mm, mm-hmm. i think and i think that's done really really well yep and you're right other than dio who i still really kind of like dio and he's kind of a badass by the end oh he totally is yeah so i don't know keep watching it's totally worth watching it Except i completely... totally gets like brainwashed and... yeah yeah but that all like it just adds into it all and like encompasses who he is and like you feel for him more and like it, it's pretty good we'll totally get into all that stuff next yeah. episode uh but i totally encourage people to watch it it's done really really well um it it's like a real show it reminds me mm. of like cowboy bebop in that way mm-hmm. like it's like a real show it's just not like a kid's cartoon exactly yeah um so but for next week i'm super stoked because valkyria revolution comes out i already pre-ordered it 30 bucks on amazon It'll be here. Nice. So I'm stoked to play that. Uh, nice. The Valkyrie first Chronicles. Yeah, the first Valkyrie Chronicles. I loved it. It was fun. I didn't get a whole lot of play on it, but I did enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm super stoked for this one. PlayStation 4, Vita, and Xbox One. It took a lot of getting used to the the battle system. The way. It, yeah. The point system for the way you move, the move points, and yeah, yeah, it's all that weird. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And I love how uh, because it, in it they uh, how would you describe it like a third person. Like I don't know. It tactical was... kind of RPG, but like almost real time sort of. It's it was almost like the third the third person angles reminded me a lot of the original Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, fixed screen mm-hmm. movement stuff. So you can move to here, here, and here, and here. But then it moved like um, what was it? Uh, XCOM or Binary? One of those? Yeah. One of those games that that was uh, tactical based. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. When you dip, because you definitely have your. Uh, you have the meter, your action meter. I guess that's what yeah. you call it, right? You pick whatever action it is you want to do, and you have to save a little snippet at the end so you can still shoot. Mm-hmm. Even if I was like, I went somewhere and I had some left, and I, I would just shoot because the Why shooting not? part's the cool part, right? <laughs> and my tank was all tricked out by the end, but uh, I'm super stoked to play. It's kind of this like, uh, like sleeper hit kind of game. It wasn't like really popular when it first came out, and I, mm. and I think it's actually somewhat hard to find um, yep. that original. Uh, PlayStation 3 version. Okay. You can get a PS4 version now because they redo everything. And But this is the first time we're actually going to get it for PS4. Super okay. stoked. I'm going to play the crap out of it. Uh, and next, for next week, we're going to be on Lift Your Spirits. Yes. With Dina Marie. That's freaking awesome. That is cool. I'm we looking, get to actually way go, looking forward to... We get to go to her... Uh, real professional studio. Yes. And record it. I was going to say not nerd studio. Yeah, not nerd studio. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that'll be Friday next uh this coming friday and it's going to be from 8 30 to 9 a.m is our spot so that'll be sweet and it's going to be with scuttlebutt brewery oh and scuttlebutt's going to be be there yeah they're going to be on the session with us so somebody from scuttlebutt forgive me i don't remember their name i'll I'll ask dina yeah she'll tell us definitely uh and she's gonna hook us up with directions because i don't know how to get there so she's (laughs) she's supposed to do all that sweet um but first the beer we're drinking today Yes. Let's talk about it, Jeremiah. <laughs> Let's really dive well, into it and talk about it. For next week as well, since we're doing next week, uh, Stone Ripper IPA. Or not IPA, uh, Paleo, I mean. So, just for putting that out there. 
Nice. Stone Ripper. To go back to the IPAs. Well, it's not IPAs. It's pale ale. Oh, you said IPA. I know I said that first, but then I said, no, it's a, actually a pale ale. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's it's how much I The Stone to. Ripper Pale <laughs> Ale. Okay. Stone, orange label. It says Ripper. Yeah. Get it. Okay. Um, <laughs> this beer. On the next episode. Drink it with us. Yes. This beer. Yes. Yeah. Tell me all about it. What do you think? Well. You're the beer guru. <laughs> Lay it on me. It, the malt flavor, like they all do when it gets warmer, definitely gross. Um, it actually gets some, not quite as crisp, it gets a little bit heavier mouthfeel as it warmed up. Quite a bit heavier mouthfeel. Um, the ciderness, cideriness of it definitely comes out more, and I think that's more with the honey coming out more. I don't know how to put it, but. It's almost it's, like meatiness. Yeah, almost. It's. It smells more meaty. Yeah. It smells a lot like a mead. Well, and I think, like, when you consider all that, uh, somewhat it makes sense just based on its appearance, really. I mean, mm. it's super clear. I thought that right away when we looked at yeah. it. And it is definitely ambery, but it's got that really nice kind of gold tone to it. It's mm -hmm. It reminded me a little bit of a cider when we, when we first mm. opened it up, just even based on appearance. Yeah. And then smell. It still smells. Super, super cidery. Yeah. Very apple-y. It does. Um, it's different. I, it is. I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it a lot. I think it's a great day for it. Oh, it's definitely. really hot out today. Yes. So we were spot on with that. <laughs> oh, wait, it was my beer. It was your beer. I was spot on. You with were that. totally spot on with that. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I totally like it. I think so far the the pack that I got with all these beers in it totally worth the 10 bucks that all it was? i think that's all it was it was like wow. 9.99 yeah just you have pack. to go to walmart just a 12 pack it, but... though so it's 9.99 plus a little bit of your soul and dignity because it's at walmart walmart yeah yes. <laughs> and you that part you never get back no yeah but you make up for it it's savings i only go there <laughs> once maybe twice a year so yeah and I regret it every time so <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i think it's worth it to go to walmart to remind yourself that you're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I like that. Life could be worse. So <laughs> <laughs> I always tell my wife when we leave there. I was like, see, babe, we could be doing a lot worse. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no offense to anybody out there that shops at Walmart. I Apparently, I clearly do. Right? That's where yeah. I got the beer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, it still stayed carbonated through all the way through too. It did. No, it stayed really good all the way through. Um, I totally can get a little more honey as it's warmed up, and the malty uh, kind of a little bit of caramely came through a lot more. Yeah. Yep. Caramel apple. Yep. And it uh, kind Gold, of uh, red delicious, not golden delicious. No. And <laughs> uh, it kind of has a little bit of that waxiness like the other one that we had. Mm, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Not not too strong. I'm going to have to look into this. I'm really curious what the deal is with this uh, trouble brewing. I want to know where they're actually located. What's going on with the New York plus the Ireland brewery. But I think so far they're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Very respectable. I'm liking it. Yeah. I'm liking it a lot. Uh, if you have to put a number on it, which we do. Yes. Okay, um, first question. We should just ask this question. Is it beer fridge worthy? Yes. Totally. I would put this in my beer fridge. I would put. I would drink this on GTA Tuesday. Yeah. So, so far, the pack is beer fridge worthy. Yes. Yeah. I, I bet you'd be hard-pressed to find just this one. Probably, yeah. Probably yeah. not. Um, I agree with you. Beer fridge. I'm stoked that it is in my beer fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least one of them. Yeah. One will be. Uh, maybe. <laughs> what, do you, uh, what do you think on score? I'm going to give 725. Nice. Going in there with the quarter point. I like it. Yep. Seven and one quarter stars. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give it... I'm gonna just going to give it a seven. seven. I think it's good. It would totally be in my beer fridge. I actually think uh, Kristen might really like this one. I think she might. It's pretty light and easy to drink, so I might save that one for her. Okay. Because my beer fridge is full of beer. That's what yes. it's for. Um, but no, I think it's pretty good. I totally awesome. think it's worth uh, braving the gauntlet of of uh, Walmart to go get this beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I, I can agree with that. I do that. You would do that? Or I'll let you do it. I'll give you some cash. <laughs> Thanks. <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Just hang out in the parking lot. <laughs> yep. Um, Be that guy. Yeah. You are that guy. <laughs> so, one last time. All right. To all the nerds. Through all the fuzz. Bottoms, Bottoms up. up. Let's, Let's get, get nerd buzz. buzz. Like, share, Talking subscribe. about beers. Talking about nerd culture. You're on Sweet. nerd buzz. Apple Sweet. <laughs> Marcus and Jeremiah. You're on nerd buzz. Let's get nerd buzzed.